Hey guys, I'm uh, back working on my truck outside here today. Having to put some uh, new brake pads on the front of it. I started squealing the other day and I thought, well, it's about that time, so I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride. Uh, show you what's going on in my neck of the woods here. Uh, everybody's been talking about, uh, you know, kind of what got them into the YouTube Garage Gang and how they got started out and so forth. Uh, thought I'd kind of give you my version of what was started me out in there. Uh, of course, I like a lot of you started out uh, watching Pete, Southwest Rod and Custom, you know, and then uh, after watching a lot of his videos and stuff, he went and visited Jeff, James Freddy at uh, Photo Finish. And I started following him, watching the quality of the uh, the workmanship and everything that they were doing, which just amazed me, the caliber of the cars that they were turning out. Uh, you know, Jeff's skills, uh, the tack on anything that was put before him really amazed me. Uh, you know, kind of on a little side topic here, I saw his video yesterday where some guy was basically saying, you know, about uh, Mondo being the lazy way out instead of metal finishing the panel or something to that effect. Uh, I don't put a lot of credence and I don't give a lot of attention to the trolls. I don't feed them. You know, I just tend to ignore them. But, uh, you know, Darren and Tommy Shue and Ruben and several other guys had pretty much said, you know, the same thing. Uh, Hopefully Jeff doesn't, you know, let this uh, affect him making videos because I learned a lot of stuff from Jeff, still learning stuff from Jeff. Uh, I don't think I would have tackled doing that lead work and stuff on my Mustang, which I still haven't got it finished yet, but I don't think I would have even attempted that without seeing some of Jeff's videos, talking to Jeff about it on the phone. Uh, it's just a tremendous wealth of knowledge there. And... Uh, you know, for anybody to be making silly comments like that, you know, and like you said, the guy didn't show anything uh, to uh, say, well, here's the way I would have done it or, or something like that. So, you know, being rude to people is, is not the way to, to, to garner friendship and, and to get help from people. I think that's one reason we all get along so well in the garage thing is because we all try to help each other. Like Darren said, you know, we need to kind of stand up for one another, and that's definitely the case. Uh, I feel that any of you guys that are in the garage gang that uh, that I talk to or dealt with, uh, I'll, I'll be the first one to come to your defense. You know, cause you guys have helped me out more than, than most people that I know, you know, around here locally. And of course, I'm doing this the wrong way, using a ratchet for a hammer. I hope you guys will forgive that. These things are kind of stuck in here. Yeah, that'll be the last thing I say about the, the troll situation unless it pops up again. I'll try to kind of watch comments on people's page and stuff, too. And if I see somebody being a jerk, I'm definitely going to try to go to them and say something. You know, that's not the way to be. Uh, you ask yourself, would they say something like that to the person in real life if they came to my shop or anybody else's shop? You know, if they said that and meant it, then I'd be the first one to hand them the stuff, all right, and show me how to do it. So if, if what I'm doing is incorrect, I don't mind anybody telling me, well, hey, that's, that's not the way you should do that, as long as they offer me an alternative or say, this is how I would do it, or here's another way to do it. You know, and there's there's good ways to put things in, the, in corrective uh, measures. Tell people, you know, hey, there's different ways. But just to come out and say, well, you know, that's the lazy way of doing it, that's not constructive. So, with that being said, it looks like I'm going to have to go inside and grab a pry bar and a hammer. I'll be right back. As my hero paint pimp says, uh, commercial break.
Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I'm trying to get this thing apart. I've had the truck for a little over five years now, and this is the first time I've had to put brakes on it, so I feel pretty fortunate that I've never had to deal with it on this one. Of course, the downside of that is they're in there pretty good. This one was down pretty far. It was actually not quite into the, the wear indicator, but buddy, it was sure close. But I know one of them was because I heard it squealing, and then when I'd go around the curves and stuff, you could hear it singing a little bit where the pad was tilted over. So I don't know which one I'm going to find it was like that, but I'm sure it'll be one of them. Uh, but I hope everybody's doing well and they've had a, a good, prosperous year so far. Yeah, uh, I really enjoy watching everybody's videos and all the stuff that uh, I'm learning from them. Trying to get back to work on the Mustang here eventually, but it seems like every time I turn around, I've got something going on with one of my daily drivers. Uh, my wife had a flat tire a couple of days ago on a brand new tire, and of course, by the time she got stopped, it had ruined the tire itself. So, never did find anything in it. I'm suspecting maybe the valve stem thing installed in the wheel when they put the tire in there may be defective. But now she's running on one of her old wheels. Yeah, that was it right there. Uh, you can see it was, trying to get this where there's not so much glare, it was definitely down into the wear indicator and it was just about into the metal. Another day or so I'd have been having to get the rotors turned or possibly even uh, getting the rotors replaced, but that was the one that was singing right there. You could definitely see where it's into the indicator because it's all shiny on the end. Uh, but yeah, that's, that was the issue right there. But anyway, uh, I should have been more prepared for this. Sorry, guys, for going back and forth. Uh, have to grab me a C clip real quick so I can push the pistons back in the airport and load the pads back up. Stand by. Okay, I'm back. Uh, like I said, I hope everybody's doing well. Everything's going good for you the first of the year. Everybody had happy holidays and so forth. Uh, really looking forward to the extravaganza in May. Uh, of course, a lot of you know I started a new job about five months ago. Technically, I'm not eligible for a vacation until next August. I'm trying to work it out where I can get enough time off to go down to land of Florida and see Darren and everybody and be there for the uh, extravaganza. That's going to be super fun. Look forward to meeting all of you guys in person that I've talked to and watched your videos. That's going to be just really, really fun. There it goes. Sometimes these things can be a real pain in the rear end trying to get them pushed back into the caliper. I've used C clamps and I've used those little tools with the, like the bolt in the center of them with a metal plate and stuff. But I found that as far as just building stuff goes, just a good pair of uh, uh, ice grips going real slow so that you don't get the cylinder cocked in the bore. You don't want to go too far or too fast either because you could rip the seals around the piston and you just keep adjusting it down as you sink each one of them down. Of course, this uh, braking system on this track is actually a two-piston caliper, so I'll have to do both of them. Just a little at a time as I go. This is a straight shift truck, by the way, and I usually gear down, so I'm not real hard on the brakes. I guess about the worst thing I do is when I tow my trailer taking uh, moving cars around and hauling stuff like Brian's Mustang back and forth, that's probably the most abuse my brakes see. You know, because like I said, I, I gear down and stuff, I don't use the brake a whole lot. But still, over time, they do wear. That one. Hopefully I got them far enough. Oh, it's going to be hard to get to. 
So here's basically what I use. Like I said, a new pair of vice grips. Just stick them in the bore there. It works pretty good. I'm trying to keep this where I don't damage my brake hose right here. Kind of short on this one. I also watched uh, Ziggy's video this morning uh, talking about how he got into the automobiles and stuff, reading that book that his dad had when he was like five years old. That's awesome. Uh, it brought back a lot of memories. And when I was a kid, I used to take stuff apart just to see how it worked. Uh, of course, when you start out like that, you never get the stuff back together. Of course, it never works again after you take it apart. So I kind of got in some trouble with my parents and stuff, you know, why'd you take that apart? Well, to see how it worked, you know, of course. It's, uh, that's no consolation whenever they wonder why the radio doesn't work or, you know, any of the other appliances or anything else that I took apart. Uh, I grew up on a farm, so we were always, you know, working on stuff, tractors, uh, you know, making stuff work, you know, old trucks, old vehicles. Uh, so I was pretty fortunate to have that, uh, amount of stuff around for me to kind of play with and work on. You know, really, uh, I got to the point when I started driving and working on my own vehicles and stuff, that's when a lot of this really took off as far as trying to fix stuff, work on stuff. I didn't have a lot of money to buy parts, you know, go out and work on stuff to try and save the money I could so I could buy better parts. Uh, I guess just out of a, a need to save money. You know, I thought, well, if I could save the money, what I'm having to pay somebody to do this, and I can buy that much better stuff myself. You know, not to mention the fact that I learned. Of course, sometimes the uh, learning process is kind of expensive after I burned up a few parts and did stuff incorrectly. You know, like uh, some of you said, this was before the YouTube garage, so, you know, I basically had to learn it on my own. You talk to people, and, uh, you know, sometimes they tell you stuff, sometimes they wouldn't. They'd want you to bring it to them. You know, say, well, well, tell me how. Well, no, just bring it over and I'll fix it. Yeah, you'll charge me to fix it. Uh, so, a lot of difference between then and now. Well, this is going to be slow going here, guys. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and turn the camera off while I finish loading this caliper and stuff up. I'm going to keep this video from being two hours long. I'll uh, bring you guys back here in just a few minutes. So, uh, I'll see you guys in a few. If I can get the camera to turn off. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm back on the other side. One thing I figured out in trying to get these bolts loose, if you turn the wheel to where the uh, back of the uh, caliper is facing out away from the vehicle, it makes it a lot easier to get something in there. There was no way I was going to break this bolt loose with uh, a 3 8 ratchet. So I got it out here where I could uh, take a piece of pipe and put on the uh, Ratchet handle, kind of like a cheater bar. There we go. See if we get this bottom one loose. <clears throat> oh, yeah, big time difference. Okay. Uh, let's see if I'm in the frame there or not. Probably not. But yeah, we were talking about before, uh, kind of how we all got into cars, mechanical stuff. Uh, like I said, I didn't ever have. Uh, anybody to teach me a whole lot. My dad knew about mechanical stuff, but it wasn't it really wasn't about cars. It's more like farm implements and and things of that nature. Uh, my grandmother also got me into arts and crafts and things of that nature, and kind of got that creative side of my mind going to kind of look at stuff in a different way. So I try to think outside the box on stuff when I can to kind of helped me along through projects and stuff. Uh, of course, I read uh, fanatically. Uh, anything that's got anything to do with any project or whatever I'm going to try and work on, I try to look up as much literature and information as I can. Used to, that meant going to the library and things of that nature. But nowadays with the internet and uh, especially with YouTube, uh, instead of reading a book, I can actually look it up uh, and see a video on how to do it. And a lot of that it's from you guys, uh, which makes my, my job a lot easier trying to do this stuff. Uh, like I said, if there's anything you need to know, chances are somebody's done a video of it on YouTube or got a link to it, to their site where they've done 
uh, examples of how they did it or, or why they're doing it or so forth. So the wealth of knowledge, uh, particularly from the garage gang, is, is phenomenal. I mean, I've, I've learned to do things. I've seen how to do stuff, which I haven't put into uh, practical application yet. But I saved all those videos and those links for you guys uh, doing this stuff. So that when I am to the point of painting my car, you know, I can go back and look at all the videos that Darren's made, James Freddy, Jeff has made. Uh, you know, if any of you go to my page, you'll probably see tons of lists of different things on how to do stuff. And it's got videos from you guys showing me how to do all that. So I don't have to try and remember whose video said what or whatever. I've got them all saved on my favorites and on different uh, applications. I'm just checking to make sure that I wasn't pushing brake fluid back out over the top of the master cylinder. That's the only bad thing when you do this. you got to kind of see where your level is. So if you don't squirt brake fluid all over your engine bay. But I hadn't uh, added any brake fluid since I had the truck. So I'm hoping that it's uh, going to be contained inside the uh, master cylinder there and I don't have to drain any of it back out. But I really enjoy the camaraderie and the, the friendship that I've developed with all you guys on the on the garage game. Uh, you know, new guys are coming in all the time, which you know is really encouraging to know that there are people out there that want to be a part of a group of guys that uh, their only interest is learning how to do stuff and trying to help each other. That's why whenever something negative happens, uh, it adversely affects all of us. So that's why I think that, uh, like we were saying earlier, we all need to stand together and watch out for each other and uh, not give the, uh, the bad people or the bad commenters or the thumbs down guys uh, any publicity or anything else. Just ignore them, move on, and, and they'll go on their merry way and everything will be fine. Or they'll figure out they were wrong and you know, hopefully turn their attitude around and become a productive member of the garage gang or, or at least give them an attitude check that uh, you know they need to try and be nicer to people. Pardon my rambling, I'm sitting here trying to think about what's going on with this, so I'm sure you guys are bored out of your mind by now. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to make a video and kind of talk about all these different things and let you guys will know what's going on in my neck of the woods, which is not a whole lot. Luckily it's pretty nice out here today. It's in the mid-40s. So I really can't complain about being cold. It's nothing like what Ruben's going through. Poor guy working in his garage, you can see his breath. So I feel your pain, Ruben. But you're a perfect example of getting out there no matter what and making it happen. Oh. You know, and after seeing Pete and Jeff and James Freddy's, then I got to watching Darren's videos and you know and his whole attitude on life, you know, not letting anything that's uh, happened to him in the past get him down. Uh, the man is a machine. Uh, you know, I know people that don't have near the physical limitations and, and things that have happened to them that, that Darren has that are basically disabled or say they're disabled. I mean they they can't do anything, won't do anything. You know, Darren's like the Energizer Bunny on steroids. I mean, he just keeps going and going. You can't keep that guy down. You know, and I guess that's kind of what motivates me to keep doing this stuff. Aches, pains, cold. Uh, you know, I, I think, well, Darren is uh, working through all the issues that he's got going on and is still able to get out there and do stuff and make things happen. And to me, that really says a lot about the, the quality of... Uh, I have some issues with this one. I don't know if I got it cocked in there sideways or what's going on. It's not wanting to cooperate. But, uh, yeah, Darren is an inspiration to all of us as far as, uh, you know, trying to help everybody that he can help, you know, through no personal gain of his own. There it goes. Because uh, I don't think you'll find a nicer guy out there. He's always, you know, the first one of us to, to pick up the torch and defend anybody that uh, is under attack and patrols. He's always, you know, one of the first, if not the first, to let us know when something unfortunate has happened to one of us and, and try and rally us all together behind the person that needs the help. Uh, you don't find people like that very often in everyday walks of life, you know? I know 
may have been maybe a handful of them in the last eight years on this earth. Uh, so I feel privileged oh, to uh, not blew the seal out of that one, uh, but that's seal. But I feel privileged to have, have made the acquaintance of all of you guys, not just Darren, but uh, just being able to talk to you all on a on mumble. You know, or, you know, I talk to a lot of you on the phone, which is really enjoyable. I uh, thought that was pretty good. Ziggy said he talked to Pete for like uh, two hours. It cost me 400 bucks. Man, that was that was been a shocker of a phone bill. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna quit babbling. I'm gonna finish getting this thing put together, and I'll bring you guys back to show you the end result. See you in a few. Okay, guys, I got it all put back together. One thing I like to do after I get the uh, caliper and stuff put back, of course, I always use this uh, disc brake lubricant uh, on the uh, caliper bolts where they go through the calipers as well as all the contact points where the, uh, the brake pads slide on these little uh, stainless deals. You don't want to put a whole lot on there because you don't want it dripping over onto your brake pads, but you want to make sure that everything moves back and forth. But before I put any pressure on the brakes, I always like to check to make sure that my caliper slides back and forth on those bolts. I'm not sure if I'm getting it for you or not easily enough so that whenever you let off the brake pedal, the uh, calipers and stuff aren't holding tension against the brake pads wearing them out. The brake pads on this side weren't real bad. That was the other side that was causing the issue. There was still you know, a little bit of life on there, but I'd say probably another... I don't know, 5,000 miles or so, maybe 10. It would have been ready for brakes anyway, so that other side just wore a little bit more premature. I'm not sure why. The calipers and stuff seemed to be floating, and those bolts had a little bit of lubricant on them when I took them out, so not real sure what's going on there. Uh, it's been great having you guys hang out with me, and, uh, whoa, blurry. <laughs> uh, while I was sitting here doing this, I hope you guys weren't too bored with all the rambling and stuff going on. Uh, of course, I got my toboggan on, so I look like a thug. <laughs> but anyway, you guys uh, take care. Watch out for each other. Everybody be safe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. See ya.